The title of this next tutorial is Spinal Cord Topography. And the first objective, surprise, describe the topography of the spinal cord. In other words, we're going to talk about why does the spinal cord terminate the L1, L2 vertebral level, what fills the space below the conus medullaris, as well as we'll describe the measurements of the spinal cord, such as how long, wide, and heavy is the spinal cord. All right, so first here we have a... Um, uh, coronal section in a posterior view of the vertebral canal and showing the dura mater within this vertebral canal coursing all the way down to the S2 vertebral level where it uh, attaches. So if we take a scalpel and then cut open this dura mater, what we see is the spinal cord within the dura mater, which is within the vertebral canal. And it arises from this frame and magnum, that hole in the base of the occipital bone, and the spinal cord courses all the way down to terminate at the L1 and between approximately L1, L2 vertebral levels in an adult. And the very bottom of the spinal cord is called the conus medullaris. So first question, what fills this space below the conus medullaris within the vertebral canal? Um, the answer is the cauda equina and then also cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is in that subarachnoid space around the entire spinal cord, but it also fills this area in the vertebral canal below this conus medullaris. So this begs the question, why does the spinal cord end at the L1, L2 vertebral level? So to describe this, here we take a look at this uh, developing fetus illustration that I drew and engraze the spinal cord within the vertebral canal, and then segmentally on either side we see uh, the Verte their associated vertebrae. Now I've only highlighted the L5 spinal cord level giving rise to the L5 nerve root which is coursing below the L5 vertebra. And I've done this to help highlight this principle, this uh, 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 vertebral segmental discrepancy that occurs because what happens then as we look at this L5 spinal cord level is that the vertebral column and the spinal cord develop at different rates. And so what happens we see is that because the spinal cord develops at a slower rate, uh, at birth and then in adult, the L5 spinal cord level is located at a more superior level than its associated L5 vertebral level. But as always, the nerve root always courses below its associated vertebra. And as a result, the lumbar and sacral nerve roots all form in the, below the conus medullaris and is known as the caudae equina or tail of the horse because it looks like a horse's tail. And so we now see there's why the spinal cord ends at approximately the L1, L2 vertebral level in adult and that the caudae equina fills the space below the conus medullaris um, as well as the cerebral spinal fluid. Now, how long is the spinal cord? It's approximately 40 to 45 centimeters long in an adult, which is less than half a meter in length. Um, it weighs approximately 35 grams, which is just about a little handful or small bowl of nuts. And its width is when we take a cross section, often we take a look at pictures of the spinal cord like this. The reality is the spinal cord in width is less than two centimeters wide, um, which is much smaller than even a dime in cross-section or smaller than the width of your pinky finger. So in review, here we've got that the spinal cord is deep to the dura mater within the vertebral canal. It terminates at the L1, L2 vertebral level that the caudae equina is inferior to the conus medullaris and fills that space in the vertebral canal, and the spinal cord's less than half a meter long, about two centimeters wide, and weighs about 35 grams.